What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at spin boxes with TTK Bootstrap and Kinter. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at spin boxes for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You can get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at spin boxes. And this is a spin box. You can see you can just click it and sort of spin through each one. Uh, we can have it where when we click the button, this label changes. Or we can have it whenever we just spin it, the label changes as well. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Get Batch Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file here. I'm just calling it spinner.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code. And I've imported TTK Bootstrap as TB. I pip installed that many videos ago. We're using the superhero theme, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's start out by creating a spin box. So I'm going to go spin box. <laughs> and I'm going to call this my underscore spin. And this is going to be a TB dot spin box. And it's TB dot because we imported TTK bootstrap as TB. And we want to put this in root and we want to give this a boot style. And here you can use all the different boot style colors that we've looked at in all the other videos in this series. So primary, secondary, info, success, danger, warning, light, dark, all of those things. Uh, let's just go success here, make it nice and green and, and weird. <laughs> and then let's my underscore spin dot pack this guy and give it a pad Y of like 20. Now, there's several different things you could do with this. First, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's give this a font of Helvetica and a size of 18. So it's nice and big and we can see this. Now, also, I'm going to put this on a separate line so it's easier to read. You can do spin boxes a couple of different ways. You can have words and other things in there, or you can have numbers. So we'll start out just with numbers. So if you want to designate a range, you can just go from underscore equals, and let's start at zero, and let's go to, let's say 10, right? So that's really all we have to do. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory, and let's go python spinner.py. And when we do, we see right away, we get this sort of empty looking spin box. It's not empty. If we actually click it, it starts at zero. And then it goes to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So we can go back down again and back up again. So that's to and from. And now you'll notice when we started this, there was nothing listed here. I'll talk about that in just a minute too. But before we do that, let's look at the other way to do this using words. So here, let's go spin box list. And here we can just create a Python list. I'm just going to call it stuff because, you know, I have no imagination. <laughs> Let's go John and April and Bob and Mary. So in order to use these, we just use a values tag and set that equal to our stuff, right? One thing to note when you add a value, it will override your from and to. So we can leave that on there. It'll just override it. So here, let's go ahead and save this and run it. And when we do, we click this. Now it says John, April, Bob, and Mary. So one thing you'll notice, like I said, it's blank when it starts and also the text seems to be highlighted. What's up with that? Well, with spin boxes, you can delete the thing that's in there and add your own thing, right? You just type it in. So now it's John, April, Bob, Mary, and Tim, right? So that's one sort of weird thing about spin boxes. Personally, I've never found a use for that, but I don't know, maybe you would find some sort of use for that. But we can disable that if we want by setting the state of the spin box. So let's come down here and set a state of, and let's set this to read only. So now when we run this, we won't be able to change it anymore by typing, but also you'll notice it's not highlighted, right? So if I click on this and hit delete and try to type something in, nothing happens, right? So that may be what you want as a default sort of thing. I usually would use that for my spin boxes because I don't want people changing them at runtime. So that's kind of interesting. Now, what about this thing where when we run this, it starts off being blank? Well, maybe that's what you want, maybe not. You can set the value of this if you want, head back over to our code and let's set the value. Let's say set spin box default. And we're actually going to need to do this underneath the spin box because we can't set a default before we've created a spin box. So here we just call my underscore spin 
and we can dot set this guy. And you can set this to anything you want. So I'm going to set this to John by default. So that's the first item in our list. So that's what I want to set it as by default. So now when we come back over here and run this guy, boom, right off the bat, John is listed. And we can cycle back up all the way through it, spin up, spin down, all the good things. Very cool. So, okay, that's cool. But how, how do we decide if something has been selected? And by selected, I mean, it's the thing showing in the spin box right now. So for instance, April, how do we get April out of here? If somebody has spun up to April. Well, we can dot get our thing. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. Let's create a button and it's just going to be my underscore button. And it's going to be a TB dot button. We want to put it in a root. We want the text to equal click me. And we want the boot style to be that same success green. And then let's my underscore button dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y 20, push down the screen a little bit. Now here we want to give this also a command and I'm going to call this spinny. Right? And so now we can come up here to the top and create this function. So let's define spinny. And here we can do something, but first let's come down here and let's create a label. So it's going to be my underscore label. And it's going to be a TB dot label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing right off the bat. And let's give this a font of Helvetica and like a size 18. So it's bigger so that we can read it. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. Give him a pad Y of 20, push it down the screen. So now what we want to happen is when we click this button, we want to change the text of this label to whatever's in the spin box. Well, to do that, we just come up here to our function and we my underscore label dot config this guy. And we can set the text equal to my underscore spin dot get. And many things in Kinter, you can dot get them. And same thing with spin box. So that's cool. You can also set a string var to your spin box and get that. But I find that sort of useless. Uh, it's just an extra step. So what I'll do is I'll just my spin dot get whatever the spin box is. So let's come back here, run this guy one more time. And here, if we click me for John, boom, it says John there. If we spin it up to Bob and click it, boom, it says Bob. If we hit Mary, boom, Mary. And not to leave out April, boom, April. So that's how you can use a button. And oh, our button is blue. That's interesting. I thought we put that as success. Oh, I misspelled success. Boom, there we go. So that works for the button, but what if you don't want to use a button? What if you just want to use the spin box itself? Well, you can give your spin box a command. So let's put this on another line and we can just call our spinny function, same exact function, or you can use a different function, really doesn't matter. So now when we run this guy, hopefully our button is green. Yes, it is. Instead of clicking the button, if I just spin this up to April, boom, it says April. When I click this thing again, boom, Bob. So it's the actual little spin box toggle things that determine when the function gets called, when that command runs, right? And there we go. So that's spin box, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, not a whole lot of bells and whistles here. Personally, I don't really use the spin box all that much, but it certainly has a place in some apps. And if you need it, that's how you use it. Peace cake. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.